Amen. I wanted to give an opportunity to our young men on Sunday night. Uh, I believe that they need to have a little more training. Amen. Amen. Uh, be instant in season, out of season. Yeah. And if there's some other young men uh, that would like an opportunity to preach, please let me know. And um, we've got a spot next week. Amen. 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 Uh, so tonight, thank God for Brother Stephen and watching him grow up. And uh, you love the Lord, don't you? And he's going to give us a message out of the Word of God real quick tonight. Amen. 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 Don't forget to pray. Amen. And preach. Amen. 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 Come up here and preach. I'm going to sit over there so I can watch it. <laughs> you got it. You got
O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. Right. Well, I take this as, you know, as honoring my father and my mother as well, your day will be long upon the land. So I think the Lord will, if you are faithful, he will preserve you and you will have long life just as you would if you honored and respected your parents. All right. <laughs> and um, if when we are faithful and we have the grain, this faith the size of mustard seed, as I said, we can move on. We want to keep that, so we need to be faithful. And right. Maybe our faith can even grow past that. Sure. Am I? But we need to get and achieve the mustard seed right. side of faith. <laughs> because I don't doubt anybody's faith in here. It's, uh, I think we are all faithful people to the Lord. Force any of 
young man. Amen. And we have to make sure that we are called of God. But what better way to find out through our young people? Amen. And I'm excited about our young people. Amen. And so that's what I'd like to see is get some more uh, that they might be able to grow up in the Word. Be able to become preachers and preach the truth. Amen. Amen. So I want to take a few moments of your time tonight. If you would turn with me to uh, John chapter 4. I know we're all very familiar with these verses. Probably heard hundreds of messages out of them. I don't think I'm going to give you anything new. But I wanted to, uh, the Lord laid upon my heart to encourage you. Amen. Amen. There cometh a woman in verse 7. Of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me a drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said a woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me the drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank there of himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I'm going to ask that uh, Brother Charles, if you would uh, pray for us tonight, I won't take a long time, I promise. Well, amen. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in the house. I thank you for the word that's already been done. Yes. Lord, pray that you would increase our faith. Faith, Lord, that's why we're here. Draw closer to you so we can better serve you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be faithful. Lord, uh, whether or not you know uh, each one of our hearts, and we know whether we're not faithful. And Lord, uh, uh, you're faithful to us, so we should be faithful to you. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you be with our pastor now. And Thank you, Lord. That you would uh, further. I pray that you just help us to pay attention, listen on purpose, and get something from you. Lord, we surely need it, and we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And, uh, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. It really bothers me a great deal when I hear about, the, or I hear men of God preaching out of the Word of God and trying to make it mean something other than what it says. Right. You know? Yes. Water's amazing stuff. And since I've been sick, one of the things they tell me is to drink a lot of water. So I drink a lot of water. How many people like water here tonight? I don't like it. But I drink it. Amen? Amen. We all know that we need water sure. to live. Yeah. Most of you know that I think there's about five quarts of blood in our system. Is that right? Anybody a doctor here? Well, there's not all that much. So we know that we have blood in our system and it consists of water. That's an amazing thing. If you don't drink water, what's going to happen? You die. You die. And water is more essential than food. Right. The way I understand it. Yeah. It's also amazing stuff too. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. It's actually composed of two precious substances, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so I think about salt. I like salt. Mm -hmm. And the more salt that you use, the more water you retain. I understand it to be true. And so it is necessary for life. But the chemical compound, you see what's it got to do with that? I think it's amazing. Sodium and chlorine. That's what salt is made of. Right. Both of those 
by themselves would kill you right. as a chemical. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've uh, ever sprinkled chlorine on your food, but if you have, you're probably going to be in trouble. Yeah. That's right. So water is a marvelous thing, is it not? Yeah. And I, I just wanted to, uh, like I said, encourage you tonight about water out of the Word of God. Amen. H2O, you've heard it called that. Two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. How many people knew that? Amen. You must have been paying attention to school. Well, let's see this water that Jesus Christ is talking about just for a few moments. Back in verse 14, but whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. That's right. That's what the Bible says. Amen. But the water I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. So what's Jesus saying to us? Well, if you have uh, taken of the water that God has given you, that is the living water, then something marvelous has happened to you as a human being. Right. Right. Now, we drink water to stay alive in many different forms. But this water that Jesus Christ is talking about it's a water that when you drink it, it gives you everlasting life. In other words, you can't lose it. You got it. It's right. a living water. Amen. I don't drink that water to live. I drink it that I might have life more abundant. Amen? Amen. Because why? It's a life-giving water. Right. An eternal life-giving water. Amen. And if you haven't had, accepted Christ as your Savior, you have no idea what I'm talking about right. tonight, but I think you understand. Amen. Amen. Christ lives in me. Amen. And he is the well that I draw from, that you draw from. Yep. And it's something that not only keeps me alive physically, but keeps me alive spiritually. Yes, amen. Why is it so many Christians today just really don't have a desire to let that water come forth? Right. We ought to be like a, a fountain. Yeah. Uh, people ought to be able to see us as a spring, springing forth of what God has laid into our hearts, amen, through the water that is in us, that is the living water. Yeah. How come it's so difficult for Christians to be happy? Yeah. Yeah. Now I know we can preach about what makes us happy, right. physical things and so on. Yeah. But why can't we just be so satisfied with the water that God has given to us, that he's put in us through the blood of Christ, the Holy Ghost. So we have that tonight, and there ought to be a rejoicing here. Amen. You ought to be excited about the fact that you have a well inside of you Amen. that ought to be bringing forth water that other people might be able to see it. Right. I pray for myself that people might be able to see the water that's in me. Sure. That I would be a spring. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing as you run down the street and water is just gushing out of you all over the place? That would get people's attention, wouldn't it? But instead, we, uh, uh, we walk around with a frown on our face. Right. We're unhappy. Yeah. How is it that we drink of that water and we don't have real happiness in our life? Amen. Now, most of the time, and I, I've said this before, that I look out amongst you and sometimes you don't look regenerated. Right. Oh, amen. You look like you're bad. Except for Mrs. Short. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Mike sometimes looks like he's happy <laughs> until his wife punches him in the stomach. <laughs> Amen. We have the elements of eternal life yeah. right inside of us tonight. That will make you happy. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would us have asked of him if he would have given it? That's what the Samaritan woman was told. Right. Give me water. Right. Give me water. I want to drink the everlasting water of God's word. Amen? Amen. The living water. Yep. That's laid out John 17, 2. And thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Right. Now, why does that just uh, set us on fire? Amen. I mean, we should have a water that appears to be on fire. Right. Because why? I have eternal life. I don't have to worry about death anymore. Neither do you if you're saved. Amen. Amen. I don't know, man. Let's right. say in Revelation 22, 1. I think we read it this morning. And it should be a pure river of water. Of yeah. Life. Clear as crystal. Right. Amen. Proceeding out of the throne of God 
and of the Lamb. Whoa! I want to stand by that water. I don't to, I'm standing by it. It's in me. It ought to be overflowing. My cup should be overflowing. But why is it that I'm so caught up with grief and difficulty to be able to survive the way that God would have me to? I ought to be excited. Amen? The original source of grace and truth comes from Jesus Christ. He is the living water. I should be excited about that. It should have manifested itself in my life by now. I've been saved since 1977. I've been saved a long time. And that water hasn't run out yet. I still believe that God can use it in my life to win people to Christ. Amen. Amen. I like what the Bible says. But whosoever drank in verse 14 of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Right. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well. Right. You feel like that? Water springing up into everlasting life. Right. If somebody came up to you tonight as you're going home, would they be able to see that living water? Right. Would they be able to see in us what Christ would have them to see? Right. That Samaritan woman had no idea what Jesus was talking about until Jesus told her. Right. And how are they going to know unless we tell them? That's right. People don't get saved on their own. No. It has to be through the Word of God. Yes. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. Hearing, Hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God for those that are in our church that are out knocking on doors. I, I think that's great. Amen. Amen. I miss that so deeply. It bothers my soul that I can't go out like I, like I used to. It does bother my soul. I want to share the water that God has put into my bones Amen. and in my life. I want people to know the Lord that I know. Right. It ought to be able to spring. You know how I know it's springing up inside of me or inside of you? It's when you want to share it with other people. Sure. You ever have a good glass of water? Amen. Can't get it here in uh, Newport News. No. Unless you buy it like that. I, I, you don't even know what's in there. But when you get good taste of water, you want to tell people about it. Right. Sometimes water does taste good. Amen. Sometimes it's better than drinking soda, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. tea, whatever. But that water that's inside of you, could you imagine if God made you like a little tea kettle? Sure. Tipped you over and poured you out. Right. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing? I wonder what God would see coming out. Right. I wonder what people might see. Right? Yeah. A little dirt. Yeah. That's right. a little sin. Yeah. Amen. Well, not to be that way. Amen. Uh, you all agree, amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Ought to be pure living water. Right. That people might say, hey, give me the drink of that. Well, you don't have anything to draw from the well. Yes, I do. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the cup. Yeah. He's the one that has put the water in my soul, in my yeah. life, that I want other people to drink from. He's the fountain. Yeah. I have, well, better than that, I have a fountain. Amen. It's new. It hasn't dried up. Amen. And you said, well, how can I know that you do? Because you see the joy in my life. I am, I, I'm full of joy. Amen. I mean, ask my wife. Amen. I'm satisfied. I often think about some of the things that I would like to buy. You ever think about things you like to buy? Of course. Of course you do. I don't get to go out to stores anymore like I used to. Don't feel sorry for me. I'm saving money. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but you got Amazon. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Is that Amazon, right? Well, I drank the water. I ought to be able to give some to Amazon. <laughs> that the people who work at Amazon, the people that work at where you work, right. they ought to be able to see something. Well, we hear this all the time. Matter of fact, we hear it so much that we don't want to hear it anymore. That's right. People ought to be able to see it. Yes. Christians ought to be able to see it. That's right. You ever have somebody say, you know what? Uh, you act like a Christian. It must be because the water's bubbling up. Right. Yeah. Some of you are going to leave here tonight disappointed. Upset with the idea you got to go to work tomorrow. We all can't be like Ron. 
you are retired. We need to pray for Rhonda. She's getting ready to move. Definitely going to miss you. Amen. But I hope that his water, his living water that he has taken upon himself, that other people might see it. And that he might say to other folks, he said, I went to a church where everybody was full of water. Amen? Amen. The Word of God. Now we, we have it all. Right. The water I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into what? Everlasting life. What I like about the water that's inside of me, as it says in verse 10, if thou knewest the gift of God, thou wouldst have asked of him. Now that I have that water, I'm enlightened by God. How do you know what the Bible says? Because I have living water in my, in my, in my veins. Sure. I have living water that really enlightens me, helps me to understand the word of God. If you're having difficulty understanding the word of God, you can call Charles. Brother Gordon said that, amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> we're, we're already set. Amen. To understand the word of God. Sure. Are you with me on that? Yes, sir. Amen. We say we know Christ, and I right. believe you do. Right. So he gives us knowledge. He does. It's the water that's going around in our system. That is the living water amen. that the Bible speaks about. Yes. How will sinners ever ask us about Jesus? If they can't see that Jesus is in us. Amen. How can we ever tell them about eternal life? Most people don't believe there's eternal life. Right. Do they? If thou knewest the gift of God, thou wouldest. How are they going to get to know? The Samaritan woman, I don't need to read that to you tonight. When she received it, she went and told everybody else. Right. Why? She said, I want you to meet somebody. I remember the one that saved your soul. You want people to meet him? Amen? Amen? Well, last thought tonight. I believe that uh, the Bible says, whosoever drinketh of the water, did you drink of it? Right. If you did, you know who we're talking about. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, and he gave you salvation. Amen. Are you there with me? Amen. Christ himself is the fountain of living water. That's right. Amen. Put a smile on everybody's face. Amen. I, I like to see you smile. I've seen some people smile and their makeup is falling off. <laughs> and it is kind of scary, isn't it? Some people just don't smile. Yeah. Amen. The world is perishing. Yeah. And we can't smile. Right. And it's funny. That would be able, and I'm talking about myself here tonight. They ought to be able to see us wherever we are and say, why are you smiling all the time? Do you just rob a bank or what? You know what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm crazy. There was a man in Luke 16 that said, just give me a drop. Just a drop. And I'll be all right. God is filled us with living water. So much so that we're well. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Amen. The rich man lifted up his eyes in hell and being in torment, seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. What does he say? Just give me a drop. Yep. I'm not going to hell. Amen. And neither are you. God has put the fire out. That is hell's fire. Right. And he's put a new fire in my bones. Right. This kind of water burns. Amen. It's an awesome water. I hope that you're saved tonight. Amen. I hope that you receive the fountain of life, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let me uh, go to John 3.15, and I promise we'll close. Amen. I think most of us are familiar with these verses. Sure. But it say that whosoever believeth, how's it called? John 3.15 and 16, mm -hmm. should not follow. What? Have eternal life. For God so loved the world. We said it so often, don't we? It's one of the first verses that we memorize. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Can that make you happy tonight? Amen. I've got everlasting life. I know it because right. the water is in my veins. It's soaking me as nothing else could soak me. I've got so much that my cup's running over. I can't help myself, and I've got to tell somebody about it. Amen. Amen. My soul no longer thirsts. Right? Why? Because Jesus is taking care of all. Amen. I think it's in Isaiah 55 1. Oh, everyone that thirsts is come. Come in. If you're thirsty tonight, let the Lord Jesus Christ come in. Amen. And you'll never thirst again. Amen. You'll never have to question science. You'll never have to question a man. You don't have to question anything. Why? Because you've got living water inside of you. That's right. Amen. Let's stand as we close it. Thank you. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, that the water that you've uh, bestowed upon me, Lord, through my accepting of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that, Lord, I would be a well. And I didn't disappoint any of your people tonight. That, Lord, they might walk out of here filled, believing, Lord, that they could be a witness to those around them. Yeah. Knowing that it's not something that they have to do. It's not something they have to work at. But Lord, just let the water flow. The Lord, as souls will come. They'll want to know the Jesus that we know. They need Christ at this time, especially in this day and age that's going on. But Lord, be with us as we take this opportunity to come and pray and thank you for coming into our soul, coming into our life. We love you, Lord. Thank you for being the fountain that you claim to be in the Word of God. Jesus Christ, holy name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Number four hundred eighty-five. Four hundred eighty.